Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a tool review slash how to use type video thing. Air Hobbies, a local um, hobby store here in Ireland, uh, recently reached out to me and offered to send me the Dirty Down set of paints that is Rust, Verdigris and Moss for review and testing. So a huge thank you to them for making this video possible. If you want to check out them, I will leave links below to their store. They're an awesome hobby shop. Um, my favorite thing about them is they do next day delivery in Ireland and it's free if you spend over 60 euro um, So I can't tell you the amount of times that I've been stuck for something that I've needed for a project And I immediately got uh, the panic taken away from me by just hitting order and it showed up the next day So once again, huge thank you to Air Hobbies. Check them out below. They're awesome. Follow the social medias and do all that cool stuff So originally I was planning on making a single video on all three uh, of the Dirty Down products in one go and that's what the star of this video was meant to be. Uh, I soon learned that there is quite a steep learning curve on how to use these products. Um, I watched a bunch of other content creators videos and trying to get a grasp on how they work and every single one of them seems to use a different method and seems to get different results. So it doesn't seem to be really consistent how to use these paints, which got a little bit frustrating, a little bit disconcerted, um, and I was wondering if they are the easiest products to use. And yeah, I guess we'll go on this journey together and figure out whether they are or aren't. I will say that I got disheartened for about 60% of the video, and then in the last 40%, I think I figured it out, um, and I got a result that I was actually quite pleased with. And, and I'm now trying to run through scenarios in my brain where I can use what I've done and apply it to some actual miniatures, um, which should be pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of crazy video. Before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys are absolute heroes to help me keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. Without you guys, it would not be possible. If you're interested in my joining my Patreon, there's links to all of that below. Benefits include a private Discord server and an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year for my patrons. Okay, guys, enough of me blathering on. Let's see what this stuff can do. Okay, guys, so like I talked about in the intro, I was ready to do Moss, Verdigris, and Rust in a single video. At least I was foolish enough to believe that I could do all three of them in one video. But I did realize there's definitely a nuance to using these things. Um, and I think they each deserve their own video. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with Rust because that's what I started today's video with. And it was an absolute adventure trying to get it done. I have some old Aegis defense lines, which I sprayed silver. Um, did one of the Aquilas and a bit of gold for a bit of contrast to it. And I'm going to go through and try and use it. So you start by making sure you shake this thing. I know people say shaking a lot. This is something you need to shake more than you've ever shook anything before. This was used... Uh, I've shaken this a lot already. I've used one of the uh, the shaking machines. And if you can see uh, how all the pigment is still stuck to the bottom, see it like this, it's like a paste. And this is after a lot of shaking. So unlike other paints, I think you do need to give it a lot of shaking and then give it a stir with a you know, sculpting tool or whatever you've got lying around a bit. of. I just used a coffee stirrer there to shake it up. So this is going to be my trial and error piece and I'm gonna start this one by applying uh, basically whatever I feel is the right amount of the rust um, paint onto the piece. I feel like it should be quite a heavy amount of the dirty down rust. And then I'm gonna use a hair dryer to dry it quite quickly. Apparently heat is something that's kind of crucial to this whole process. A lot of people say it even the bottle it says on, oh, keep it warm and then do it onto a warm surface. So I don't know. So I applied it to this. And after this initial test, it didn't look very rusty to me, to be honest. It just looked like silver stained with brown. It wasn't terrible, but it definitely wasn't what I'd seen from other people's videos. And I was kind of wondering where I'd went wrong. So, so I tried to apply a little bit more into the corners and recesses, trying to get that kind of flaky, rusty look that I'd seen. And I thought adding a kind of even larger quantities again to the piece. Um, in selective areas and then drawing that again, would I get a better result for uh, the technique? And the short answer is no. No, it, it did not work again. I dried it with the hairdryer. Seeing what kind of result I would get. And once again, it, it didn't do what I thought it was gonna do. It didn't work like the examples I had seen online. So kind of test two was a fail. And if you're getting disheartened during the video, please stick around to the end. I promise. I, I think I nail it in the end. Um, and I think all of the failures along the way are kind of good teaching points. So please follow along and uh, let me know what you think in the end. 
So for the uh, our third test, I just applied a much thinner coat to the center. And instead of using the hairdryer, I just sat and let this dry naturally. I was wondering if heat was having a, a, a bad effect on it. I did think this looked a little bit better. It definitely has a little bit of a richer orangey look to it. A um, little bit rust, but still not great. For the fourth test, I decided maybe it's the silver undercoat that's not doing a great job. So I spent a little bit of time adding some extra color to the end piece, the green piece. Um, and then I applied a, a, a nice amount of the rust on top of that. And yeah, I basically saw how that would settle. For some reason, I figured these things would be like contrast or shades, and you use quite a lot of it. I'm not sure if that's so much the case, or at least I didn't think it was the case at this point in the process. I definitely thought it was looking a little bit better already with having that splash of color underneath it. The Aegis defense line, or the old school Aegis defense line, was looking like a defense line a little bit, so... Once again, I didn't dry it too crazily, I just let it sat, and it did look kind of cool. But it did, I wasn't happy with any of them. It definitely wasn't what I wanted. At this point, I turned to my friends. I started asking them some questions and sending some pictures around. And someone that had actually used it quite a bit suggested I'd used too much. And I was like, yeah, I guess I might have used too much. He suggested, you know, you can just take some off, right, with some water. And at this revelation, I was like, you can do what? Because it's not a sealed thing. It's oh, okay. So what I did was, is I added some water to a fairly stiff dry brush. And then I basically started washing it in a downwards direction, trying to get those streaks into it. And the results started to show through and it actually started to look a lot like rust. It was actually kind of crazy, the result I was getting. And maybe this was the kind of final learning point uh, that I had. Like I said, I've seen a bunch of other people using this stuff in a bunch of different ways, but I haven't seen anyone use it this way yet, where they apply a lot and then they remove it, almost like an oil wash. So after learning this, I went back to this piece and this is where I was going to use all the things that I've learned up until this point and try and get a really nice finished piece. Spoiler, I did. At least I think I did. So, like I said, it's exactly the same thing. Sprayed silver, I did some green accent colors on some panels, added a gold Aquila, and then I just threw the um, rust effect paint all over this thing. Sorry, it goes a little bit blurry and out of focus. I was excited to see what it all looked like in the end. Didn't hold it in the right position, so it was a little bit blurry. Um, but you do get the idea. Um, it doesn't really matter if I overload it now because I know I'm going to be removing some with a, uh, a bit of water. So this is the amount that I have on. And as you can see, it looks like that kind of horrible brown colored piece of scenery. Make sure to close the pot. And this is where I'm after step one. So this is me applying rust in three stages. First, apply the rust. Stage two is going to be removing the rust. So like I said, I had an old, um, an old flat sided brush, an old dry brush or an old base brush. And when I made sure that the rust was completely dry, I just went in, like I said, the downward motion, which would be that kind of water streak effect you would get on rusty material. And I just wiped off a considerable amount of the rust. It actually wiped off super easy. I don't know whether if you leave the rust on for a longer period of time, it gets harder to remove or whether it's always this way. But I started to see an effect that I was really, really, really liking. And like I said at the beginning of the video, my brain started to race thinking about imagine a Death Guard tank in this kind of color scheme. Imagine all the whole city where the terrain done like this. And I, yeah, I just got really excited. Um, and whenever a paint job starts to uh, do that or a paint effect starts to do that, I think it's a really good sign. And here is what it looked like after the water had dried and the rust that I'd left behind was dried. This is the result that I got. And I think this looks unbelievable. So the last step of my three steps, remember this whole video, it's actually when you take it all apart, uh, you take everything that I've learned and everything I've taught you guys not to do. It's just a three stage process. You just get a nice bright silver and give this rust a little light dry brush on all the sharp corners. Like rusty areas tends to be, people scuff the corners and the flat panels say nice, dark and horrid. And with that done, that's me finished using the dirty down rust. I'm gonna show you some finished pictures in the end to, uh, but I mean, there's some result here. I think this looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, here is my tester piece that I used to uh, learn from and uh, as you can see, all the different transitions between all the different steps. And from that to putting all the things I've learned into effect gave me this. 
I'm not going to lie, I don't know why, but this is a very pleasing piece of kit now, I think. It really did come together at the end from like being super disheartened to all of a sudden being super proud of this tiny little wall. Some close-up images of what I was working with and then the finished piece. should submit this to White Dwarf, man. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> like I said, if you guys want to try the Dirty Down Rust Paint Air Hobbies, has it in stock. If you live in Ireland, it's a very easy place to get your stuff. So as you can see, we focused on the rust for this video and we figured out how it works. I think I'm happy with the results that I have achieved um, and I'm dying to try it on a tank or a Death Guard miniature or something like that, something more usable than just a piece of Aegis defense line. Uh, I'm going to be doing a separate video on both the Moss and the Verdigree. So it's going to be basically a three part series on the Dirty Down section um, so that I can basically go into full detail and really learn how to use this in a way that I'm happy with. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. More likes means it gets pushed out to more people, which helps the channel grow immensely. If you're not already subscribed, which apparently 63% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed, take two seconds the other day and hit that button. It means the world to me. If you have any questions about anything I did in this video or any tips that you think that I missed or could help me uh, with my dirty down game, that sounds so wrong, let's just ignore that, um, then please put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. Once again, huge thank you to Air Hobbies for providing the paints and a huge thank you to all of my patrons. I will see you guys in the next video.